we're going to have a look at the boot lid and um, try and sort the problem out. What I think happened there is I think the, um, the, the primer, although it appeared to be dry, was still retaining some water. Um, and then as I painted over the top of it, that water has come through, causing the surface to, to react, surface paint. We'll have a look at that now, see what state the paint's in. And then what I'm going to have to do is sand it all back again and repaint it, which is a bit of a nose, but we'll go for a decent finish. So let's bite the bullet and uh, get on with the work. Okay, so here you can see that damage to the paint. So I think what we're going to have to do is take it back. We're going to use some 60 grit and then work up the grits gradually and take it all the way back to the primer coat. Once we get to primer, I think, hopefully, we should be okay. This is another area I did at the same time. Now the problem that I had was the lacquer had gone on too thick here and it, it had a space underneath it and it cracked. So I took it right back and repainted it at the same time as I did the boot lid and you can see that reaction there. It's really pretty dire. Oh, now it's raining. That's splendid. That'll help. Okay. Drawing the negatives out of the... Um, or the, pos <laughs> the positives out of the negatives. There was an area, I missed a dent just here. So when we take it back, at least I'm going to be able to um, fill that and repair that. So I suppose that's one positive aspect of it. So as I'm taking it back now, you can really see just how bad that was underneath that top layer. So yeah, definitely all needs to come off. Much more extensive than it first appeared. How badly that top coat was taken. Right, this is far too slow, so we decided we're going to get a bit more brutal. With some power! Right. This is going to be pretty messy for me. Oh my god. Yeah, baby. That's uh. Ah! Right, back onto the 60 bit. Nah, let's get some power back on. We like power. Power is good. Right, stepped it down a level to the 80 grit, and we'll see how that goes. It's quite a messy procedure. Okay, so we're on the 80 grit. Get in there, slowly. Today, I'm pretty confident that I've sorted out where the problem lies. So, really excited. Get the bootleg done, get the second door done, patch up where the paint reacted on the back of the car. And if all that goes well, then that's the painting more or less finished. Um, we've just got to do the, the, um, the, the clear coating, the flow coat, and then uh, putting everything back together. So, oh, at long last, we can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's been a really long haul getting here. It's probably taken me knocking on for three months in total, not helped by the weather, raining all the time. Every day I've got a day off, it seems to rain. And having to do something three times and then take it back to uh, bare metal each time is obviously very time consuming, but it's all part of the learning experience. Hopefully next time I'll do it in about a tenth of the time. So, 
10 minutes seems like an eternity when you're waiting for something to dry. It is literally like watching paint dry. So the temptation then is to dive in and spray too early and I think that's the mistake I've been making while I've had these reactions. So the solution, go and make a brew. Sanding back my skimmer filler. There's a few marks on there from that. Um, it, it, I could have done that better. It looked smooth, but typically when you get a dark metallic coat on it, really shows any imperfection really badly. The other, the other small issue is when I did the main bulk of the car in the summer, the clear coat dried really, really quickly. Um, now it's a lot cooler. It's probably about 14 degrees today, 13, 14 degrees C. It's taking quite a long time to cool, so I've got lots of suicidal insects going into the paint. So I've had quite a few stick onto the um, the clear coat. Hopefully they'll. I've picked a couple out, and um, it, it, if there's some land after my final coat, hopefully they'll come out when I when I do the final polishing and, and cutting, um, and it'll look a wee bit better. But time will tell. Time will tell. Right. Let's crack on and do the final coating. Well, the plan today was uh, I was going to put a flow coat on my boot lid and door that I painted up the other day. Unfortunately, uh, if you recall from the um, a, a few minutes back, as it would be on the video, it started to rain at the end of the session. Um, the weather's been a real issue with this because it's now the 20th of October. Uh, we've had one rain-free day since the middle of September and it's causing me real problems. Um, and on this occasion, I mean, although I'm undercover, the, it just get droplets in. Some drops have landed on the panels, it's caused watermarks. So I've had to stand them back again. And we're going to do another um, colour coat today, um, just to try and hopefully cover that up. If not, then I'm going to have to send it back to primer again. Um, and that'll be the fourth time that I've done the tailgate, uh, which is a bit annoying. Um, I'm really starting to get a bit hacked off with having to re keep redoing it. Hopefully this time we'll get it right. Hopefully. This is the tailgate, so I've sanded it back. And um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. He's just needs panel wiping now. Hopefully I've got the um, clear coat off. Sanded it back enough to get all that off. So and what I'm hoping is that it's not going to end up being all patchy on the paint 
That was the worst bit of dripping was around there, but I think I've cleared that okay. Um, because that's what happened with the rear panel. Because that's what's happened with the rear panel is that it um, came out all patchy because I'd done some local repairs on the bits that had reacted. So I ended up having to sand it right back and start again. So we've got the primer on and I'm just about to now um, do the uh, colour coat for that. Well, unbelievably, it's done it again. I'll give up. I don't know what to do with this. It's driving me fucking nuts. I've actually run out of paint now. I'm going to have to get some more mixed up. It's a Sunday, so it's not going to happen. So at least next week, so... That's a right shitter. Same on this. Terrible reaction. Again. And on this door, so it's every single panel that I've just done. Look at that. Terrible. Dreadful. too cold outside for spraying and what with the vagaries of the weather um, so I decided to set this up with a little spree boothy kind of arrangement in the garage um, clear the little square out I can't get the car in here unfortunately because it's too full of other stuff other cars um, but I have managed to get a little bit of square so I can do some of the uh, removable panels in here like the boot lid and the door to try and get it um, that I can finally get those squared away here we are inside my little spray boothy thing. Um, so we've uh, swept the floor, done a bit of dusting. Um, I've got the primer on the panels, I've sanded those back with 800. Um, I've warmed the panels with a heat gun just to try and get the temperature of those up a little bit. Um, I've got a wee little radiator thingy here ticking away. That's been going about half an hour now to get things warmed up a bit in here because it was pretty chilly first thing. So we're just trying to get a little bit of warmth up, aiming for about 14 degrees something of that sort um, and then once we're up to temperature um, then we'll start painting. I'll also warm my paint um, to, to try and get that up to a sensible temperature as well so hopefully everything will be warmish um, for when we actually start to spray. Happy days. So we're having real problems with um, crazing. As you can see, this section on the back panel, that's pretty hideous. And this has kind of been blighting me all the way through. Originally it was crazed down here. We took that off and then repainted here. And we've had problems with the boot lid again. So I'm now about to do the boot lid the third time. Okay, so we finally got back to doing the um, tailgate. It's been sanded down and skim filled. This is when the job starts to get really frustrating because I had that problem with the paint, I've had to strip it all back and now the, the job is just really dragging on now. It's been going on for a couple of months now, I've been doing the respray, I, I kind of expected it to be finished in a couple of weeks. And so when you get problems like this it really just makes you want to just pack it in, but there's no two ways around it really. 
you've got to just persevere and bite the bullet and do what needs to be done, which in this case is stripping it right back. And because I've been away working, this has been left for quite some time now, and so there's rust appearing around the, the lock and so on, which I'm going to have to try and resolve, um, sand that off and treat it. Before I can get on and paint the panel, the um, car is still waiting, you know, it's been gathering dirt and dust, the um, tape starts to come off, and you just feel like you're going backwards rather than forwards sometimes. So hopefully we'll get on today, we'll get in a position that I can get some, some primer on this panel, and we can start feeling as though we're making some progress, because at the moment it just feels like it's one step forwards and two steps back. So we're going to leave those a good couple of days, maybe three. Plenty of time to go off before we put on the base coat in the hopes that that will stop it from reacting. This plague that I've had of paint reacting. So we'll give it a good three days and then hopefully we'll be alright. Well, it looks as though we finally managed to get the boot lid um, painted and the, the rear panel on the car. Um, it looks so good, a good result. Here it is. So the question now, of course, is what went wrong? What lessons are to be learned from that? When I did the, the rear end of the car, it was very, very hot. It was in the summer, it was 30 degrees. I've been watching the gunman, who of course is based in Australia, so he works in high heat as well. He's in a, a spray booth at 30 degrees. And the flash off time was virtually nothing. By the time I'd gone around one side of the car and then done the other side, it was time to go back and do the first side. It was only maybe five minutes of flash off time. As the weather's got colder, that flash off time has extended and I haven't given it enough time was one of the, the many suggestions as to what the problem was. So, I mean, I've lost count now of how many times I've had to do that sodding boot lid. It's probably about six times. The rear panel three, four times maybe. Now, the, so that's possibly one of the things that was causing the crazing is that um, the, the flash off time wasn't enough and there was uh, oils and so on coming through from the paint underneath, contaminants coming through from the, the previous coat, which hadn't dried properly and it wasn't adhering properly. Then you get a degree of shrinkage and, and so on and so forth. The other suggestion was that I wasn't leaving enough time between the primer and the base coat, the colour coat. I'd left it a good few hours, which in the summer was enough because it was drying uh, very quickly. But as the, the air went on, it wasn't so good. And on that flat panel at the back, the paint was going on much thicker um, than on the, the rear wings. And so that was one of the other issues, was that the paint was going on too thick. And there was a tendency, I think, I was using the trigger on the gun as a switch. It was on or it was off. Um, what I've done now is I, I feather the trigger much more to moderate the delivery of paint. Um, I wound the pressure down a little bit. Um, and I've got a, a pressure gauge now on the end of the gun so I can see better what the actual pressure delivery is to the gun. Because I've got a, 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 a hose runner maybe 20 metres. Um, so the pressure that's on the the um, compressor doesn't really bear much relation to what's coming out at the other end, probably. So that makes it quite difficult to finally judge your pressure. So I've now got a pressure gauge on the end of the gun. This is the um, inline gauge that I've bought uh, mounted on the gun. Obviously, it makes everything a little bit more kind of unwieldy. 
but it has worked extremely well. I've also put a filter on there as well, just to make sure that that wasn't part of the issue. Um, so we've got the gauge, the filter, the gauge, and then and then the gun. So yeah, it does make for a lot more bulk. You have to be careful to make sure you've got the, the hose well wrapped up out of the way. But I'm sure that has all helped with the consistency of the finish because I know what the pressure is and also making sure that there's no contaminants getting through from the hose. It's a long run, as I said, maybe 15, 20 metres. Although I've got a, 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 a water trap on the, on the compressor, in that length of hose, you could have some, some water uh, trapped in the hose. In terms of other things that might have been causing it, um, people suggested contaminants. Well, I make from my hands and, and from the previous panels, but I've gone back to bare metal. Um, I've um, panel wiped the panels and I've also tacked cloth them. So I don't think that was it. So I think the three main causes potentially were not waiting long enough between coats, um, and I've forgotten number two now, <laughs> putting the paint on too thick, um, and the other one. Um, so, not allowing enough time between the primer and the main coat, um, putting the, the layers on, not allowing the flashing time, putting the layers on too thick. So I've changed all of those things now. Um, so I don't know which one it was that was causing the problem because I changed them all at the same time, but we now have a good result. So the primer I left for a minimum of 24 hours before going over it with the base coat. Um, and the flash off time between base coat layers, I've left at um, 20 to 30 minutes as a minimum. And then I'm putting the paint on thinner as well. So not only am I leaving it longer, but there's less paint on the panel as well. Um, so that seems to have solved it, fingers crossed. What I haven't done yet is clear coated it. And that's one of the things that caused the original problem. I did have, cigars going out. I did have a good result on that back panel initially. Um, but um, what, had, what had happened was that the clear coat went on too thick. And where the hood attaches to the front of that panel, it sort of kicks up in a little angle. A bit where there's a little bit of spray over on the stripes video. And the bait, the, the uh, clear coat had gone on too thick on there and it was actually, it didn't have a dip like that, it just went like that. And of course, as soon as any pressure was put on that, when I put the, um, the, the, the holding rail on there, it was gonna crack the clear coat. And so I had to take all of that off even though the rest of the paint was good. That then left me with the problem of merging the two together, the two areas together. So I ended up just having to take all the paint off that back panel. And it was after that, that I then started to have problems with the back panel and contamination. And that was coinciding with the weather getting colder. So that's it. I hope that helps. Um, I've learned a terrific amount from doing this. And uh, I hope it helps some of you guys too.